Hi all, continuing my obsession with hyperparameter optimization. Today I'm going to take you through a quick example of Hyperopt sklearn, which is a wrapper around a much more complicated package called Hyperopt. Uh, this wrapper makes it specific to scikit-learn. Just a warning, uh, Hyperopt sklearn is just simple enough to make it dangerous. Uh, you can sort of put in very few options and have it give you a result. Uh, but if you really understand what that result means, or if you really understand what those options mean, you're probably going to want more control over them. And so I think Hyperopt sklearn falls in this dangerous place of maybe making someone feel like they really understand the machine learning hyperparameter tuning they're doing, when really it's doing too much for you. Uh, and if you understood what it was doing for you on a deep level, you would probably want more control. That was my experience, at least. And after 30 minutes of seriously using Hyperopt uh, sklearn, I switched over to Hyperopt, which is a frustrating package, but gives you all the control you could ever want. So let me dive in, uh, just in case anyone is interested in this. So first, I'm just going to load my packages and prerequisites. And I really want to do this all in front of you, skipping no steps, because what has been frustrating for me is there are lots of examples for both Hyperopt and Hyperopt sklearn that when you try to run them, they just don't work. And no one is giving enough information about package versions or anything like that, uh, that to tell you why it's not working. So I'm going to show you an example that I, I definitely know works, and I'll put uh, a requirements list on the GitHub linked below so you can see exactly what package versions I'm using. All right, so I'm going to load up my packages. I'm going to load up. Uh, this sonar data set, if you want more information, you can go read about it here. And I should say I'm following an example from Jason Brownlee's blog. I love it. I'll, I'll link the example there. Uh, he goes into also how to handle regression through Hyperopt sklearn. I'm just going to do a quick classification example. Once I've got my data loaded, split it into X and Ys, make sure that my labels are encoded. And I'm going to have a train set and a test set. Here, my test set will be 33% of my full data, probably a little larger than is really necessary, uh, but we're just trying to get through a quick example. So here is the real meat of this video, the Hyperopt estimator, uh, which we imported from HP sklearn. You can see that here. Each of these options are what I mean by being just a little bit dangerous. So first of all, I'm telling it I want to run through its full list of classifiers. That's what's going on here. And this is the full list of classifiers that Hyperopt uh, sklearn has. I'm also telling it I want to run through its full list of pre-processing steps. Now, I could specify specific pre-processing for it to try. But here, I'm just saying, try everything. Try all your classifiers. Try all your pre-processing steps. I'm going to use this really cool algorithm uh, that's also in Hyperopt. It is a parameter tree that uh, essentially uses a Bayesian method to sample around the space that you've given. And if it finds a pocket of the space that looks good, it will sample around that a little more finely. So a really cool method that's smarter than a random search and not as time or resource intensive as an exhaustive search. Here, just for the sake of time, we're only going to do 50 trials. That's woefully low. In real life, I would do more like 1,000 or 10,000. We're going to set each trial to a 30-second timeout. I would really recommend, if you were doing this for the first time, to just disable this feature. Run maybe 10 trials. Just see how long they're taking. And if your trials are taking a minute each, obviously you know you're not going to get anywhere with this. So it really depends on your particular data. Uh, here, just for the sake of quickness, I, I happen to know from running this notebook earlier, my trials are only taking a couple seconds each. This is a, a relatively small data set. So I have defined my classifier. And this is something that I had put in because I was trying to figure out what was going on. By default, the scoring metric is accuracy. And actually, scoring is not an option here. Um, if you're used to scikit-learn, that got a little frustrating. I put it here as a reminder to myself. So scoring is not the option. It would be loss underscore fn. I'll show you that in a second. But the default scoring method is accuracy. If you read their documentation, it sounds like the default scoring method is f1 score if you went to their page and read it. But I actually dug through their GitHub, I looked at the source code, and the default scoring method for classifiers is accuracy. Uh, and you can go to the GitHub and confirm that. 
But again, if you read their documentation, it implies that it's F1 Sport. That is kind of frustrating. Okay, so we've set up our model. Enough soapbox from me there. Let's train the model. Again, I see my trials are just taking a couple of seconds each. And as that's running, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and talk about space here. So it'll keep put moving us down. I can specify a loss function. So for example, if you wanted to do regression, you might want to specify mean absolute error. Uh, now here I still have my classifier. So obviously this might be a little bit silly, but you can specify a loss function and it needs to be one that you want minimized. So if you were using something like AUC, you might need a wrapper function that would do one minus AUC because it's going to minimize whatever it is you've put here. Uh, you can go to their GitHub source and actually look at what these options are by default for classifiers. Again, it is accuracy. And for regression, it is R squared. So just a little note there. This was frustratingly difficult to find for me. Uh, again, I had to dig through their source code. So our trials are almost finished. And as soon as we have finished our trials, we can look at the best score. All right, it looks like our trials have finished. Let's get our score. And I just realized I forgot to put in here that I also want the best model. So let me grab that. I actually want to print out the model parameters. And here we had as our best model, a random florist classifier. And then all of the options it set are reported here. So you could actually just copy and paste this. Um, it, with the exception of the pre-processing steps, you would actually need to do the standard scalar from scikit-learn. But for the classifier, I could copy these details here and just make a random forest classifier that would get this accuracy. And again, this was accuracy on our test set. So we can see that we were actually doing really well on our uh, training set. In fact, this would be like a 96% accuracy on our training set. Uh, it dropped down to about 80% on our test set. That is how you run a hyperparameter tuning with Hyperopt SK Learn. Uh, their documentation even points out that this is really just better than using the defaults in Scikit-Learn. So if that's where you're at, or if you have a friend who thinks he's doing machine learning just using all the defaults in Scikit-Learn, hand this to your friend. Um, they're going to do better than they were before. They're going to win more competitions. They're going to um, have a better opinion of them at work. But if you really know what's going on with these hyperparameters, you probably want more control than this. And Hyperopt SKLearn does give you some things where you can specify distributions. You can even specify distributions on your classifiers. You can say, I think it's 50% likely to be a random forest, 20% likely to be an uh, XGBoost, getting really into the Bayesian nature of this uh, tuning method. However, if you're going down that rabbit hole already, you're better off learning the syntax for Hyperopt, in my opinion. And I'll make a future video on that or maybe series of videos because it is woefully lacking in documentation and requires a lot of explanation. Uh, but if you just want something to dump in place of the scikit-learn defaults, you will get a better result here. Um, and you will win more competitions, do better at work, that sort of thing. But someone who really understands this and is using Hyperopt, specifying all of their own search space is going to do better than that. So you sort of got a tier there. You could use the scikit-learn defaults. Hyperopt SK Learn, or take the time and frustration to learn Hyperopt. It really is frustrating. It took me about a week to even get what was going on. And that's going to be essentially your best option at the moment. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've learned something from it. And I encourage you to go back and watch my other video on Scikit Optimize. I think that is a far better choice if you're just trying to do something simple a lot more power. It forces you to specify a search space, which I think is, is key here. And then I'll have a future video or series of videos on Hyperopt that I would encourage you to watch, because I really think if you want to do the best possible, that is sort of the price of admission. You have to learn uh, what the search spaces really mean, what the parameters really mean, and dig into everything that's going on, leaving nothing to sort of the defaults of a package. All right, thank you all. Uh, have a good one.